Right, so welcome back to a new one on this channel, and on this occasion is the time module of Shaperbox. Everything on this guide is in chapters. If you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. If you like this guide, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. Everything is on the description. Okay, so at first is a little bit funny to understand how you know how this works to figure it out. But I gotta go slow so we can understand how it thinks and how we can control it. Make sure that right here it says as LFO length we can talk about this in a minute and then at the bottom it says one bar now the important part right here is to understand how the grid works right here so the time module it's all about going back in time so I have a one bar drum mini loop I'm gonna be playing it this is how it sounds right so we have a kick right here then a snare on beat two then on the third we have a kick and then on the fourth we have the same snare right so again pretty easy so how this works is that you have an x-axis and a y-axis the uh, x-axis which is going to be the representation right here at the top you know the top bar is again one bar because we are using one bar so we have beat one beat two three and four right and this is why we are able to see whatever that happens on the drum middle loop the kick and snare now then in the left side you have the y-axis and this is going to be the offset and remember again we are using one bar so it's going to be divided again just like the upper part on four different beats so one two three and four and then on the left one two three and four okay so why is this important well right now we have a one bar loop so when i go to this section i'm going to be changing whatever that happens at this point in time and how it's going to be offsetting well depending on what we do on the y-axis so what i want to do so we can understand how this works i want to stand on the beat number two and i don't i don't want to play the snare i want to repeat and go back in time and play the kick which is what happens on the beat on the beat number one all right so i'm going to be maybe selecting this and i'm going to be selecting this tool all right so i'm going to be going right here and notice what happens so what happens is that now at this point in time with the snare plays we are going back in time one beat remember this is the representation on the left of one beat and when we reach this section is going back in time and it's playing this kick so on the beat number two we just go back in time and play the same kick we have on the beat number one and this is how it works you choose a part you know a section on the upper part of the in the x axis and then you decide going down how much you want to go back in time using the y-axis same principle right here what happens if i don't want to play the kick uh, right here that we have on the beat number three i want to play the number one well going one beat uh, down it's just not gonna cut it i'm gonna go two beats because it's gonna be one and then two so now we get kick kick and then kick again it's always going back in time to play the first kick and same thing right here if i want the snare to play the first kick i'm gonna be going two beats no no three bits so now it's going back one two and then three in time and the only thing that we are getting is just the first kick playing over and over again So this is how it works depending on where we are at what point in time on the x-axis we are going to decide how much we're going to go back in time using the y-axis now if i play it back notice that you have a representation right here and this is the offset display every time that we go to a new beat it's showing you how much or how is going back and what is going to be played back and notice that every time that we go to a new section it's always going back to the first kick so again this is super useful because it gives you a rep representation of you know what it's doing you know how it's going you know back in time all right so let's do something a little bit more challenging i'm going to be resetting everything and i'm going to be playing it back so okay so i want to play this kick again so we need to maybe here play it on the first bar on the first uh, beat i want to you know go back in time and play the same kick if i go one you know all the way uh, to one beat well it's just, it's just not gonna cut it notice how the uh, playback right here gives us this representation that it's starting right here well maybe i'm gonna need to do half beat and if you do that we get the same kick because we go back in time to this position so okay let's uh, take the snare for example maybe i want to go back in time and play the snare over and over again until the whole beat ends 
So we do the same thing. I'm gonna go maybe, oh, maybe there. I'm just gonna go back in time, maybe there. All right, cool. So I'm gonna do the same thing. And then we get this snare three times. So what happens if right here, I want to go back in time and just maybe, I don't know, play a kick before this, you know, this kick hits. So it's the same principle. We go here and then we just decide how much we go back in time. And maybe I guess it's going to be around here. Yeah, there we go. And right here on the display is showing us that we are going right here just to play the kick. All right, so this is again how it works. I want to catch the same snares that we get right here, so we need to offset. Maybe I'm gonna be going here, and I guess it's going to be, and this of course requires a little bit of practice. After, after a little while, uh, this, you know, gets easier. So I'm get, catching the same snare we have right here. And then again, you can go crazy on this one. Maybe I'm gonna be going back right here. All right, so I'm catching the kick. And then again, you can just experiment and see where you land. All right. And this is served from a kick in, a, in just a snare. So super cool. All right. Okay, so the time range, if I open it, is going to say SLFO length or then beats, or then, you know, milliseconds. Okay, so why is us LFO length? So this is going to be the time range for the uh, ruler that we have right here, you know, the, the grid. So if it's us LFO, whatever is that we are using right here is a representation that we get right here at the top. If uh, we are using one bar, this is gonna be the representation of, you know, one bar. If I change it to, I don't know, eight bars, Notice that this one changes, it's zero, two bars, four, and then eight bars. It's uh, following whatever, you know, option that we have right here. So I could go right here at the top and change the beat, and this is what we will do, it will change what happens on the Y axis. Right now, it's gonna be eight bars, because it says eight bars on the X axis, and it's eight bars as well on the Y axis. But if I change it to maybe one bar, notice that the, uh, the line right here, you have a, you know, a striped line. This means that now the Y axis, it's not eight bars, it's going to be one bar. So the time range of how much you go down, when you go down, is going to be a little bit different. Now all of this is you know, completely up to you. Usually you use as LFO length. Now if I go to maybe two bars, it's going to be that. If I go to four, this line is going to be go, going half you know, the eight bars that we have on the on the x-axis. Now, also, you can go in milliseconds. So this is going to be a little bit different because I can do 10 milliseconds. And as you know, 10 milliseconds is not, an, is not a lot. So it's going to be super, super fast. Whatever change we make right here is going to be, again, really, really fast. So we're going to maybe use it in a minute. Now, for now, again, the most common use, and it says right here, best for general use, is going to be as LFO length. For now, I'm just going to go one bar so we can fit whatever we had on the kick and the snare, right? Now, then at the bottom, you have all these different options. And for now, I'm just going to go to start, and I believe you already know this. You have templates that you can use, reversed, scratches, and so on. So I'm going to maybe go to starter, and then maybe I'm going to choose uh, this one. So sometimes, and of course, depending on the material that you're using, right now I'm, I'm, I have a kick and snare, it's not, you know, super complex. It's going to get a little bit scratchy. So that's why you have the step mode smooth and you have two different ways. So the smooth, again, it's just gonna smooth the changes when the playback changes. But you can choose instant and it's gonna be a hard change. You're gonna get, you know, maybe some clicks and some pops. But all of this depends on whatever clip is that you're using at the back. I'm gonna be maybe, maybe using a different clip if I go to basic. Now we have, you know, a little bit more. So if I go to stutter, it's gonna do its job. But it's just a little bit glitchy, which is fine. But I can go to smooth. So the changes are just gonna be a little bit more, you know, smoother. That, that's all. 
Okay, so this is one way of using this, you know, we go heart right here at the bottom and we go back in time to play some, you know, different part and we can get different variations and so on and so on and so on. So, okay, so I'm using a little full length and then we have the one bar. And I'm going to go to basic. So again, this, what's, this is one way of using it. The other one is going to be slowing it down or, you know, going faster. You cannot go really fast unless you go down. But, you know, maybe I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to be playing the drums. So what we want to do, instead of making a heart change like this, what we want is we want something like this. So when it reaches right here, it's going to slow the playback. And remember how this works. This is going to the X, the Y axis is going to the side. How much is going to do it? So right now it's just not a lot. If I do two, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. So we are going half beat because we are using one beat. But still, you know, it's just pretty aggressive. Now if I do three, it's going to get super slow. And at the point, you know, we get to one, that is what we get. We are going back in time one beat, but it's just, you know, stuck. And notice how the playback looks. It's stuck right here, so it's not playing back because we have one. Now, as I go keep going down and, you know, move on from that, then we get it super slow. Now, at some point, if we keep going down, it's going to get really scratchy. I'm going to go off. And now we are entering into the kind of a reverse type of sound. And if I go all the way, it's super fast. And remember again how this works. On the beat number two, we need to go back in time. Four beats in this case, we are doing four. Since of course it's one beat, we need to uh, travel one beat by four beats on the Y axis. It's super fast. It has not a lot of time to, you know, to go back in time. So it's, again, it's just going to speed up instead of slowing down like we are getting right here. Right? Notice that right here at the back, we have the representation, this line right here, of what the Y axis is. If I uh, do something like, you know, like that, and I do this, notice that we get nothing. We get full silence because it's stuck right here. So, but if I do something like this, what are we doing? We are just making it half tempo. So you have a lot of, you know, ways of, of using this in a creative way, of course. I'm going to go back. And right now, you know, it's just, you know, you know how it works. We can just do things and just go crazy. I'm going to maybe go right here. It's just going to make it, make it, maybe slow down on the first one. And just, you know, keep adding stuff. And maybe right here, I'm just going to speed up because, you know, we can. Ah, on that one, I just failed. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a creative tool. Uh, you know, just amazing creative, you know, just an amazing creative tool. Now, remember, you do have the mix right here. So what happens if I go down in the mix? So what we get is, of course, we get the dry signal and then we get the process signal and then we just decide the blend all the way up. We just, you know, listen to whatever this is doing, but you can still, you know, maybe keep whatever loop that you have in the back and introduce a little bit of variation, which is something super, super creative. Also, maybe you just don't want to do it on the full spectrum. So maybe you're going to be affecting the higher frequencies by this much, but when I go to the lower frequencies, I can just, you know, do whatever the if I want. Maybe I could do something different. So yeah, highly creative. All right, so I'm just gonna, you know, just remove it. Now I'm gonna be going here. And also right now I'm just using stride lines, but you can introduce curves and this will, you know, just give you that scratch but again it's just super fast we'll do something simple now 
again, maybe all the way up on the mix, it's cool, but maybe on a production it's not super useful, but going down in the mix, again, gives you a variation, something else going up in the back, which is, again, highly creative. Anyway, I don't want to do it on the full spectrum, so we can leave the uh, kick and the snare unaffected. Just do it on the higher frequencies. And this sounds amazing. If I turn it off, it's like the dumbest, <laughs> dumbest uh, loop. Right. So this is how the uh, time module works. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's a very simple module. Once you understand that you know how the X and the Y axis works and everything else, uh, the, the thing is that you need to fool around with this. This is how it works. The other modules, not all of them, but you know, some of them are just pretty straightforward. The volume, we can side chaining, duck or trim, or you know, maybe use it as a, as a compressor, let's say, or maybe you can drive it and crush it but the time, uh, the time module is a, you know, it's a more creative uh, module. Maybe you can use it just like we did by, you know, adding, uh, and I can maybe go right here to basic, to maybe go back in time and just create a different variation of the same loop that you have, or maybe just use it on a more creative way, just, you know, just like this, and use the blend control just to get something extra, to find something else out of your loop or whatever source that you're just, you know, using. Okay, so hopefully you liked all of this and you now know and you learned how this works. And remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can. Go to the links at the description and you have links for PayPal, Patreon and YouTube. Thanks. And also you have the QR on the screen. See you on the next one.